I like that we got all this topic of receipts, JD. Um, because this week, I mean, you, you I mean, you didn't really get into a lot of the conversations that I was getting into, the arguments I was getting into on YouTube with some mm-hmm. of these people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure I give a shout out to a lot of these uh people in the Ravens flock before we begin this great show because you know what? I think they deserve it. Some of these people I think they really deserve some of this stuff, JD. Oh, I, oh. I, I, I love a, it. Made a <laughs> show. <laughs> love it. So I love you, Marcus. I love it. We, we think the same thing. We think, think alike. Go ahead, baby. What we got? What we got here? What we got? So, what we got? This is mainly, and I only went to one of the videos since when you and I did a film breakdown of the Steelers in the Ravens game. People, these Ravens fans had a huge problem with that. The main reason why we looked at that was Ravens didn't lose that many games this year, but you wanted to look at one of the certain games they did lose to see why that could be and what the Chiefs could pull from that. Because as you know, you've been in, you've been in locker rooms, you've been in these film rooms with the NFL teams. They not only look at your good stuff. They also look at what teams did to you that worked, which is a, a lot of these people, a lot of these Ravens fans couldn't really understand. So anyway, we have uh, the comments here. This this is from one particular comment stream with these uh, Ravens fans. Okay, talking taking five games into the season with a new offensive coordinator. And well, man, get real. At the time, Ravens didn't score over 30 points yet, man. We were searching for what works. If Spags go back to that game like you did, KC's dead for sure. Look at the finished product. Ravens got better. Ha, 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 ha. So I go, sure thing, best DBs in the league and best DT in the league. Somebody else, a different Ravens fan, best DB against uh, against who? Best DT, that why they consistently get run on? Dude, Chiefs will get dominated. Chiefs are overmatched. They haven't played on. Uh, they haven't played or beaten a team close to the Ravens level. Ravens 31-13. So this guy asked me, who who we played against? Uh, we played against the best receivers in the league, buddy, okay? Um, and my response, you don't know ball, dude. Pretty apparent. Good luck today. I'll do my best not to troll these comments later. Here we go. Um, yeah. and then got the nervous show film from a week five. Uh, uh, full, how foolish is that? Do Ravens have greatly improved since week five? Not only that, Ravens beat themselves in week five, do to learn the game, almost certainly be back for you at 6 p.m. And so, yeah, <laughs> come on, come see us, <laughs> love it, come see us. So, learn yeah, the we'll- game. Yeah, and I, I love what you said, learn the game, clown. I'll be here to collect your tears in a few hours. I love it. <laughs> We give him a little thing to put his tears in. There, here you go. Here's a little tear. Here's some. Here's some tears. Here's some droplets in here. Here's some droplets of of, of some some haters that are out there, baby. Go ahead. What's ne- what's the next one? Tears. Right. Tears. You're real delusional. Chiefs fans living the past. She's playing a real team from top to bottom. This is easy money, Ravens. You'll find out. Believe that. Supreme comment. <laughs> oh my goodness! Really? Listen. Okay. That. Right there in itself, that that whole narrative that we didn't play anybody all year, right? That we had an easy road. Who did we go against? When you talk about specifically the DBs, well, who did you go against? Uh, let's see. Let's name the, the top receivers in the game. Devontae Adams, check. Went against him. Uh, A.J. Brown, check. check. Went against him. Devontae Smith, check. Went against him. Tyreek Hill, twice. Tyreek Hill, twice. Check. Went against him. Jalen Waddle, check. Went against him. Stephon Diggs, twice. Check, twice. <laughs> what about Justin Jefferson? Right? Okay, the odds will be the best receiver in the game. Yeah, put him out of game. Check. Went against him. Okay, let's go. I, I, no, no. How about Jamar Chase? Right, and and, and T Higgs. Check. Went against them. Okay. Garrett Wilson. Who? Who? Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson, check, went against him. Uh, how about the whole uh, receiving core out there in San Diego, right? Yeah. Man, <laughs> went against him, right? Uh, Jaguars, too, Calvin Ridley. Um, and that, that, was, that was when they had, what's his name, before he got hurt? Um, yeah. Kirk, too. Christian Kirk. Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, check, check. <laughs> Tight ends, LaPorta, check. We went against uh, uh, St. Brown, check, went against him. Hawkins. So. Who? Hawkinson. Hawkinson. Check. Who? Who else do we? Who else do we need to call? Who else do we need to see? Right? Who else? Did Did they think that they was gonna have a receiver that was better than the the caliber receivers we already seen? Not just saw. I'm talking about shut down. Keenan Allen. Yes, I couldn't even think his name because there were so many of them. Thank you, T G I L T N. Thank you. Shut them all down. 
uh, pa- Packers receivers, which I, mean, I, I think some of them had good games, but we still wanted to get those guys as well. And I, I would take the Packers you receivers over the Ravens receivers as well. Dobbs, uh, hey, Dobbs, Watson, uh, what's that? Uh, Weems, uh, who, yeah, Reed, check, uh, check, check, check. Uh, what Cortland Sutton and um and uh, Jerry Judy as well. Yeah, they they bottom tier compared yeah. to everybody else we name. <laughs> everybody else we name, they bottom tier. Yeah, yeah. but they right around there where the, the Ravens receivers are. Yeah, uh, DJ, D- DJ Moore Bears. DJ Moore. I mean, man, look, hit look. <laughs> we see, we got them. We got them all over the place. We got them all over the place. I'm going in next. Next video, I'm just gonna put receipts up here like this, Marcus, around my chest. So we just, you know, a necklace, a receipt necklace. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know, the, the, the defense is wearing the chains. Uh, yeah. After make a big play, or a receipt necklace. <laughs> and and there's yeah. more. There's more too, JD. I, I just took like I took oh well, uh, oh well. Uh, yeah, this, this is a second. There was a lot of them, but I only stuck to two pages of stuff. But this, I mean, this is like all different things. Um, your game plan is the same as Texans game plan playing in the first half. You think that the Ravens haven't already adjusted to this, then you're fooling yourself. Okay. I guess personnel doesn't matter. <laughs> Come on, man. Listen, I, and I said this and I said this last week that what was going to work for us and, and Spags was in his bag. We knew this. We Spags know these guys really well. The difference between us and the Houston Texans is because our, our complexity of our defense how we bring them from different sides, different angles, different guys, uh, is the, we're heads and shoulders above the Texans in blitzing. We just are, okay? The Texans was the least amount of blitz team defensively than anybody else in the league. So they were actually implementing something new into what they were doing, uh, uh, game plan, schem- schematically. And so that's why they were able to kind of see what they were doing, right? Spags? Whole different, whole different game, whole different ball game altogether. But I went there and I watched this film, and I watched this sucker over and over again because I just wanted to make sure what we were doing. And I knew what I look, I knew exactly what we were going to do, and it was. I said we got to bring five, we got to bring six, we got to bring six guys, sometimes even seven, and we got to trust our guys in the back, to, you know, to do their job. The best corners in the league, the best men corners in the league, did their job. They did they they do diligence. They shut these guys down. The only one I could think of they got a big play was that Zay Flowers, and the idiot had to mess it up with the Tony. Okay. And then that sucker got we got we got a little bit of that crawler back, didn't we? Okay. Yep. You know, act like you've been there before. So we'll we'll get into all of that, man. But listen, hey, all of that. Our guys came up big because that's who they were. But go ahead. Yeah, we'll, go ahead, Marcus. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just just let, letting our viewers see the different comments and stuff. You know, just you know. Look, yeah, there's, when there's, I'm telling you, I was blindsided by this is one thing. It's like one thing because I, I think I saw some people online say, "Oh, Ravens fans are really cool." Like you know, they weren't talking a lot. I was like, "Wait," but like the, for me, in our experiences, we've had Bengals fans, we've had Bills fans, we've had Raiders fans come on, but like not even in the same class as what the the, the Ravens did this week. Because they really like commented on all our videos. We had some people who liked our stuff. But a lot yeah. of these people were just coming on and saying, oh, you guys are going to get killed this week and dominate two possessions. And it's like, wait, really? One they say you guys are going to lose, that's fine, whatever. But like to, to specifically say you're going to get dominated, 47-14? I mean, that, that's an actual comment. 47-14. 47-14? Where you see that at? Did somebody has that up there? First comment, the Ravens tackles were injured this game with a bunch of crying emojis. Ravens are healthy. Ravens 47-14. Oh, shoot, man. That's a, that sucker right there needed to be smacked. Somebody, somebody, somebody should have backhanded him as soon as he said 47. Psh, out your mouth. What are you talking about? This, but this, this is an indication of people not knowing how good the Chiefs were and how good our defense has been and not knowing our, our defense was one of the top-rated defenses the entire year. The entire year. This is going back to the snub of – McDuffie and Sneed not getting in the Pro Bowl, not getting their recognition for who they really are. This is a snub to our linebackers playing great games, going out there and not backing up from anybody doing what they've been doing all year. This is a doubt to what our guys 
playing defensive end, defensive tackles, have been doing all year with the pressures and the sacks for the entire NFL. They just haven't recognized it. They just haven't seen it. 47? Look, I get, you know, we had a bad game. And that's what they, everybody always re- want to revert back to certain. And I get it because sometimes you have to. With the with obviously uh, losing to the Raiders, okay. I said there was two two teams, you know, Raiders beat us, and then it was, you know, uh, Denver, okay, where everybody had the flu uh, and throwing up and probably didn't have any energy. We, you know, we still was was handling them. You know, Raider game, yeah. Okay. Other than that, every, every other game that we lost should have beat Green Bay, should have beat uh, really? Detroit, should have beat uh, Philly, should have beat the Bills. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's four games that we should have won, okay, that we were in at the very end. Not like, without a doubt. Like, one call goes this way, we win. We win. And it was – this is what we were seeing. So I get, yeah, out of sight, out of mind. You know, look, if you're a Ravens fan, you are riding high this season, okay? And you had every right to do so, all right? I'm, look, I am a Lamar Jackson fan. I like Lamar a lot. He's a very talented quarterback. I love everything about him, the way he carries himself, the way he speaks to the media, just his whole disposition of who he is. I, I like that. I think he's, I think he's a solid guy. I really do. You know, and I, I watch guys. I watch how they act. And, you know, it's, he, he's a solid guy. And what you want is consistency. He's a consistently solid guy. I never heard anybody talk bad about him. True. Me and my nephew were talking. Chad goes, you know, Chad, uh, you know, Packers fan, you know, a little upset because, he, you know, they had to go home. But we were talking. And we know Lamar's a solid dude. You know, you want to see him, you know, almost win. I said, Chad, you know, I almost wanted to see him win. But unless he's playing us. He plays us his whole different ball game, and you know he he just had to take that L. That's just that's just what it is. Some guys, even good guys, got to lose. Good guy had to lose. A lot of talent, but we can't sit there and say he is better than Patrick Mahomes, or he was going to go ahead and beat Patrick Mahomes in this. There's a reason PM15 is who he is. There's a reason everybody's talking about him being the GOAT already, okay, in his infancy of being in the NFL. They had to take 20 years like Tom Brady to do what he's done. I mean, look at at his body of work right now. Like, come on, man. Are we serious? And I said, you know, we having this conversation because this is what I hate about it too, okay? I'm I'm just going to have to talk. And I said, look. Everybody put so much pressure on Lamar Jackson's shoulders, right? They said everything about Lamar, why he didn't win, why he's not that good. But when you compare, you know, all the other quarterbacks getting paid fifty some million dollars, you know, Joe Burrow fifty five million dollars on the sideline, Justin Herbert fifty two million on the sideline. Okay, Josh Allen he can't win it all, right? You got all these quarterbacks, you know, Russell Wilson making two hundred fifty million, however much he was making, all these. Uh, Dak Prescott, all these guys making all these millions of dollars. Huge money. Oh, uh, old Achilles heel, Aaron Rodgers, you know, making 30. Okay. Shooting his shot at Travis Kelsey uh, because he's doing, you know, uh, you know, different videos and stuff out there. Every chance we get, he's trying to put his, yeah, he's trying to put his name out there. You know, Chad, is, but my nephew, I, I, uh, looked like, uh, 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 what's the name from, uh, oh, I see his face. Dad got it uh, from uh, from Con Air. It looked like him, uh, you know, Nicholas Cage oh, from Nicholas Con Air. Cage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, come on, man. Like all of it, all of it. Yeah, T G I L T N. Fruitcake Rogers. Yeah, man, come on. Like every chance you get, you go to the. Look, I get everybody's doing whatever they have to do. Okay, but one thing you cannot discount. One thing you just cannot do is you can never, ever discount PM15, Patrick Mahomes. You're not going to do it. Not on our watch, what you've been watching all these years since he's been in the league, what he's been able to do, what he's been able to accomplish. You are not going to minimize that. 
you just can't. And go ahead. No, I was just saying, and I think one of the things that kind of what you talked about, it, the way a lot of these talking heads in the media who don't watch the Chiefs, and we obviously know our team. We obviously, and that's the thing. It's like the stats are there. The proof's in the pudding. You can go, anyone can go look at the stats, but people were choosing to not look at the stats. Uh, with yeah. being the number two uh, scoring defense, uh, looking at our sacks, looking at the pressure rate. But like people were discounting our defense, pretty much not g- giving any credit. No one's giving it credit uh, the Miami game, the Buffalo game, and then coming to this Baltimore game. So the fans who weren't paying attention to us all season were duped. And then on top of that, you talk about Mahomes, but overall, you, I mean, you talk about there, there's, a, there's a different, and people in the NBA, people in the NFL talk about it, former players. There's a different type of feel in the playoffs. Everything, the stakes are higher. Obviously, the stakes are higher. It's winner go home. There's no next week. There's no game tomorrow night. There's nothing to get prepared for. It's it. It's winner go home. And the stakes are different. Our team, as young as it is, number two, uh, the, the, the second youngest defense in the league, everyone's so young on this team. We have, Yes, we have some elder statesmen, but these guys won a Super Bowl last year. They know what it feels like. This is just another game to them. Yes, it's another game to them, but it's still a, a playoff game, but they understand the stakes. They understand the, the, the meaning of it. Whereas Lamar, yeah. that's, that's the deepest he's ever gone. That's what is he only has two playoff wins. That was the deepest he's ever gone. That team, everyone, they're trying to rely on Roquan Smith saying he's the next Ray Lewis. This Roquan Smith is great. That guy comes from Chicago. He All he knows is losing in the last few years. He's never been in a game like this before. And, and you saw, you know, that rough, the, uh, the the penalty he had to Trey Smith, the, uh, the unsportsmanlike conduct. The stuff like that. Is, yes. The, 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 the amount of unsportsmanlike conduct they had yesterday really showed and proved this team wasn't ready for the moment. Our team is. They've been there before. Andy Reid, during his press conference today, they asked him how they plan on practicing this week. He's, oh, we're just going to do what, what, what we normally do. That's not normal because teams don't usually get to this point. But, Andy, it's such an every-year thing now. It's like, yep, we, we're just going to do what our normal schedule, our normal routine because it works and it's proven, obviously. But it's like they, they, it was a lot of discounting, the, 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 the playoff experience, and our defense is doing what they did. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. no, it, 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 it absolutely wonderful point, great point. I, and I was actually I, I thought about that point because when guys have been there before, they know how to act accordingly. Okay, you know it's almost like when they say like, "Hey, man, if you got into the end zone, hey, act like you've been there before, right? You know, don't go crazy. You know, you go to a club and you ain't never seen nothing before. Don't don't act like you just oh my gosh, like you ain't never seen nothing. You know, you've been there before, right? <laughs> Come in, be cool, relax, chill, right?" And so that it was to their detriment. So Raycon Smith, uh, clowning, okay, with the targeting with uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes right up against the head. Zay Flowers with the boneheaded call, taunting. Like all these things was to shoot them in the foot. And it cost them. It cost them field position and it cost them yards. It could have, and, and ultimately, it cost them the game. All those things adds up. They do. And that's what you, you don't want to become, you know, self-inflicting anything that you're doing. Why well, do that? And so when you have players that have been there before, that know how to carry themselves, you can tell a difference. You can absolutely tell a difference. So I, I get it, man. I, I just when, – when you, you, there's ways that you go about things. And that was, without a doubt – to their demise it was to their demise hi everybody thanks for watching subscribe here to get the latest from the show also be sure to check out the best clips from chief concerns and if you prefer to listen to the show subscribe and follow us on apple podcasts spotify and anywhere else you get your podcasts